Okay, uh, I'm gonna do some rust repairs on the cab, windshield perimeter. Uh, and all that's got to be done in little pieces. I mean, you can't just make one big piece, fill that hole, fill the whole hole up. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do the backside first. I got it marked out where I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut that piece out from here to here and make that one piece first. Obviously it needs more down here, but I can't, I don't wanna cut one big piece out to fill all that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this first and then I'll come back and, and work my way down. And then when I get the inside done, I'll come back and start working on the outside. Now, now the first thing I've done is took the hammer and dolly to try to straighten the lip out some, and I made sure that these two pieces was already separated all the way down where I'm gonna cut, which is right there. Because uh, if it was still welded together anywhere, I, I needed to do that before I cut this so I got more strong support to beat on it, so yeah. Okay, now I cut that piece out, go from there. So that was a pretty simple operation. <laughs> and notice I cut through here. I mean, do yourself a favor. When you're using that cutoff wheel, you might have to go past where you want to go to with that cutoff wheel. But it's a lot easier to go ahead and cut what you need out and that's easy, real easy to weld up. I mean, obviously I'm at the weld a piece all the way down to there anyway, so. Yeah, don't worry about cutting through something that ain't don't need cutting, because you can weld that up. If you gotta get in there to get it out, do it. So I got a piece that I cut out, and I got a piece of sheet metal here that I sanded on both sides. I mean, because obviously you're gonna want to paint this anyway, so it's a lot easier to sand it while it's flat before you even cut it. So I'm gonna take the piece I cut out. I got a straight edge cut across here. I'm gonna lay it on there. I'm gonna give it just a little bit longer. I can always come back and grind that down and then roll it over and put me a mark right there. That's how wide I want it. That's pretty much the widest part, part I got. I checked the widest part, so. That's how wide I want it right there. Inch and a quarter. First piece cut, we off to the races. So now I need to bend it. So I need to mark where the bend needs to be. So that's going to be, uh, I can mark right through that rusted hole, <laughs> like right there. That's where I need to bend it, right there. That's uh, 9 sixteenths. And I don't want a full 90 degree bend. I mean, you look at that, it's not quite 90. Of course, I could straighten it back out if I overbend it, but yeah. So I got my piece of a brake up to the mark, and uh, I'm gonna try to bend it without going too far. Try that. Looks kind of the same as the old piece. I think we're gonna call it good enough. So obviously I can't get on every camera angle that's required to do this, but uh, you see it looks gonna look something like that. I mean, that's gonna be a pretty good fit. Uh, the problem is when I get on up here, I got a gap here, so I gotta, 
this has got to be bent this way a little bit. So I need to shrink this side some. And then when I get over here, it's got to curl up. So I got to shrink this lip some to get that curve. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to shrink this right in here. So I got my shrinker and my stretcher set up. And I got a mark. I need to... I need to shrink all this, I mean, but just a little bit. I mean, it's, you gotta be careful with this shrinker and stretcher because it will go too far and you have to go the other way. I mean, you see, I'm already getting a bend, just that little bit right there. Check it. Needs a little more right in here. Ooh, that's a lot. Got a lot more now. <laughs> And this is going to be the corner. It's going to be a pretty good bend on this end. See how much it ended up bent just that little bit? All right, so you can see I pretty much got it fitting. I mean, that's pretty close right there. Okay, so I got that piece tacked in. what it looks like from this side yeah with the camera it's gonna be hard to see all this but uh you see what we got there so so I can come on the inside go ahead and weld this bottom edge up and then cut me some more continue moving down the line so I cut me a template out of the construction paper and uh, cut that piece out, welded it in. So the back side on this side is done, except for way up under there, I still got some more holes. So I'm gonna move to do the same thing to the other side. So uh, obviously I can't show you everything. I can't get the camera on all the angles and uh, not only that, I mean, if I show everything I do, move the camera for every little shot and everything, it'll take me forever to get this done. So, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. So the other side, the inside is gonna be the same as I've done here. When I get on this outside piece, then I'll turn the camera on and show you how I shaped that. Okay, that's what the inside repair looks like from the outside. Uh, so I didn't spend a lot of time smoothing that up because it's going to be behind the dash anyway. Nobody going to see it. Uh, going to probably have to put some uh, seam sealer around the edges of it. Uh, obviously, on the outside, I'm going to have to do a little bit better job smoothing it out. And just so you guys know, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to do a perfect job for a simple fact is, I mean, this truck has got a lot of rust in it. I mean, not, not just the rust that you can see that, but uh, all up in these cavities and these A-pillars. Uh, it's got a double roof. So between the inside roof and the outside roof, who knows what's up in there. It might even be rat nests up in there. But you can see the inside, for example, there, it's got rust all up in there. I mean, you can't fix all that. I mean, and then when I do these repairs, it's gonna be places like up in there, <laughs> I mean, you can't, I mean, it's going to keep, rust is like a cancer. It's going to keep eating. Once it gets started, it's going to keep eating. Now, I'm going to get 
I'm gonna get inside everywhere I can, put rust killer to try to stop some of that. But after I do these repairs, patches, <laughs> after I patch these rust holes, I mean, the rust is still gonna be inside there eating its way out. So uh, you can, uh, if you spend a whole lot of time on this truck, you can still look for like 10, 15 years, maybe, maybe less. It's gonna have, the rust on the inside is gonna start eating through and you're gonna be having more rust issues. So with an old rusted up truck like this, uh, it's, it's impossible to stop all the rust, so what, I'm, I'm just going to patch the best I can these rust spots and call it good. I mean, it'd be, it wouldn't make no sense. I mean, what else you going to do? If you, had a, if you could find a truck cab to come out of the desert out west or whatever, it didn't have no rust, it'd be a different story, but this one evidently didn't come out of the desert like come out of the Gulf Coast. So on the outside, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with this small spot and uh, fix that. That'll give me a chance to practice up <laughs> to get to this big one. So first thing I've done, a wire wheel around this area, I'm gonna patch and I'm gonna take a measurement. <clears throat> uh, that lip's a half inch. And then uh, add another three quarter inch, one inch. So I'm gonna cut a piece of inch and three quarter wide. And I see probably six inches long. Just try to fix this lip right here. They're gonna require more than one piece. So I'm gonna do the lip, same as I've done the inside, I'm gonna do the lip, and then cut another piece to come down from the lip. See if we can make it look kinda of close to the original. So this lip right here is a half inch. Uh, and I want to make sure I got enough because I can always come in here and grind some of that down. I want five eighths. I want to do a bend, uh, pretty much a 90 degree bend right there. It's almost a 90. That's probably what I want right there. So it's going to come in here or something like that. So. I gotta curl this end up, I would say from, to start with from here, all the way out to the end. So I'm gonna get my shrinker and, and, and get this curling up, start with. You see just some two, see how much bend and just a little bit, it don't take much, that shrinker. Okay, you see I'm well on the way. I need to spend a lot of time shrinking. I would say from here, here out. So you can see after, after more shrinking, we're getting pretty close there. So now it needs to curve in this way. Like from here out. So I'm gonna get the stretcher. I need to stretch this, sort of push it in. So after shrinking and stretching, we get it to fit kind of like that. And uh, at this point, I'm almost, I'm ready to cut out the piece that's gonna be, that I'm gonna replace this with. But before I do, I wanna drill some holes through this because it's got to be plug welded to that back piece. So this piece, before I cut this out, I gotta make sure, I got a spot weld right there. 
I need I need to break that spot well loose before I cut that. Make it easier. So like I said, I'm gonna use my rust killer to try to get as many spots I can. So before I weld this piece in, I need to go ahead and treat that area with that rust killer. Get as much of it up in there as I can while it's easy to get to. So I almost got this piece ready to tack in, but before I do, I need to, I need to get a curve right there. So in order to do that, I gotta get over to my anvil and uh, it's gonna be tricky, but I gotta do it. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> so I'm hoping I can do something like this. Yeah, see I'm getting, that's good, that's far enough. When I get this tacked all in, then I can take the hammer and dolly or whatever and, and get that down a little bit more. So I got, I got this piece close enough, I'm gonna tack it in. And then uh, after I get it tacked in, I can finish beating it into submission. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fine. Gonna work good, gonna be good. So I'm gonna start on this end and work my way. I got this flush right here. So I'm gonna put a tack. And uh, I'm gonna put a tack right there. A little bitty tack, just like that. I can live with that. I can live with that. Now, I can start beating this into submission. A little bit too far. Now, right there. Now I'm gonna tack on that. Okay, we're on the way. Obviously this gear's got to come down. Since I got it tacked in, I start beating on it now to get it where I need it. So now I come down, so that's why I left this a little long. I come in and trim it and shape that up right there. Now for my next trick, I'm gonna do a cut and butt to fix this. Uh, most of you already know how to do that, but the ones that don't, I'm fixing to show you right now. So first thing I need is a template. Uh, I'm gonna set that right there, put a magnet right there. So I got some magnets holding that in place. So I'm gonna take my finger and rub right there in that crack. real good and I should have a mark on the back side of this to show me where to cut it yeah so I need a piece just a little bit bigger than that so I got my piece of metal cut a little bit bigger than that and I kind of got it bent 
kind of sorta, not a big deal. And I got some marks so I can see how wide the gap is and where the gap is to make sure I cover over that. So I'm gonna put that right there. Put one tack right there. I'm gonna come on this end, put another tack. Now the cutting butt part. So I'm gonna take my cut off wheel and cut through there. Uh, we start buttoning it up. So I'm gonna find a spot where the two metals are flush Try to get my gap kind of small. I mean, I can weld that, that's no problem. Where it's flush right there, attack it. And I'm gonna work my way around, get it flush. I mean, you can tell it's flush, you just drag your finger over it and tell if you flush or not. Now I need to cut across the bottom, this end and the bottom, and get that fitting. And uh, I see there was my mark on that end, so probably cut like down there. Yep, that'll work. I'm gonna weld this up and it's gonna require this little quick burst of that MIG welder all the way, everywhere, to get that welded up. So when I get it welded up, I'll show you what that looks like and I'll grind it down and show you what it looks like finished. Okay, that's the first weld. Looks terrible. So I got, I'm gonna sand that, smooth that down, then I'm gonna have to weld over a lot. I'm gonna have to do some more welding. Yeah, but you can see just that little bit of grinding that's starting to look like a C10 again. There we have that repair. Little uh, body filler and it'd be like factory. Get her done. Yeah. We still got a lot more to get done over here though. <laughs> and it's gonna be the same process over here. Only more of it. Okay, what's the story on the top end kit? Uh, well, I got in contact with the seller, AT Racing World, actually a Speedmaster California location. Evidently, they don't know anything about engines because they said, oh, that's a matching set. That intake and heads, that's a matching set. <laughs> And uh, I said something about the, the eBay listing, you can clearly see in the pictures, it got adjustable guide plates. They said, no, it's no picture of adjustable guide plates. And if you go to the eBay listing and you look at this stuff, you can use a zoom feature and you can clearly see, I mean, they got the valve covers up, you clearly see they got adjustable guide plates in the picture, so. And, uh, he said, I could check with the team, see about getting you a different intake, but we don't have the square port intakes in stock. And I said, well, send me some over port heads. That'd be even better. Or refund for the entire kit. And he said, well, if you want to re start the return process for the, I, I, you had to send all the parts back. <laughs> I thought to myself, I said, well, they so stupid, they'll probably get, I'll send all the stuff back and they'll send me a mess. Oh, you didn't send everything back. Or <laughs> the good part will probably be when they say, oh, you sent 
guide plates back that's not adjustable. When our picture surely shows this got adjustable guide plates. <laughs> so here's what's gonna happen. That intake will work perfect with those peanut port heads I got. I mean, I can clean. <laughs> I can knock the dirt dauber nest out of them heads <laughs> and use that intake on those heads. That's probably what's gonna happen. And these heads, well, you seen I stuck the tunnel ram on, on here. These, the tunnel ram works good with these heads. So uh, these heads are going to go on a future build with either that tunnel ram or a, a square port intake, one of the two. So the bottom line is I'm keeping the kit, even though, even though uh, I got screwed over. So yeah, PCE. Guys, don't ever buy that junk. Don't buy it. Uh, AT Racing World is uh, their uh, eBay handle in California. Don't buy from them because uh, be almost. They don't know nothing. They don't know. They don't. They said this intake fits the heads. Look at it. I mean, look. I mean, look. You see the ports. <laughs> in the heads, they, I sent them pictures of that. And they said, oh, that's a matching set. <laughs> yep, yeah, PCE, don't buy. And I was sitting in my design chair thinking <laughs> that, uh, hey, I could use those heads, I could either use that tunnel ram or get a square port intake and use those heads on this build, but that'll mean with those, that'll mean it's going to be a high RPM, high, horse, high horsepower build. That little old 10 bolt rear end with the 28 spline axles probably wouldn't last five minutes with that. And uh, when I started building this truck, I wanted kind of like a lower RPM, big block 454. So the peanut port heads and that intake is what we're going with. And uh, Red contacted Lunati about a voodoo cam, see if they wanted to uh, showcase a cam on our YouTube channel, and uh, they never even they never even replied. <laughs> they probably thought, "See, y'all crazy." So we're not gonna go with a Lunati voodoo cam. We're gonna go with a comp thumper cam. Not the mother thumper, not the big mother thumper, but just the thumper, the small thumper cam, just to get a good sound. And they, and they still, I looked at a bunch of dyno results on those. They still make pretty good horsepower. Uh, no vacuum, hardly to speak of, but I don't need vacuum because I'm not using a brake booster. Uh, so yeah, it would be fine. So peanut port heads, that intake, comp thumper cam, I'm gonna go with uh, like tw like 20 cc, 22 cc dome pistons, so it'll have like nine, nine and a half to one compression ratio. Which uh, that thumper cam has a 107 load separation, and you guys in the know know what that means. That means that it bleeds off some of the compression between the intake and the valve, opening and closing. So it needs that those cams require a higher compression because of that. So yeah, I'm thinking that'd be a pretty good combination. Nine, nine and a half to one compression ratio and a small thumper cam, peanut port heads, and that intake right there. So that's what we're looking at. So I told you, Red, not to buy that junk. Now Bob. You sit right there, told me to hit the buy now button. Yeah, I know. It's a, I know it's my fault. Hey, I built you, so it's my fault. But hey, guys, it's all good. I mean, the the top end kit. I mean, I had to use it on two different motors, but I mean, I'm gonna keep it and use it. Uh, but hey, that's all we got time for in this video. So we getting it. We just ain't got it yet. Appreciate you. See you next time.